Dozens of oyster beds will be placed along the Trout River as part of a new $20,000 grant to improve the water quality here in Northeast Florida. Work will start at Riverview Park, and that's where we find News for Jack's reporter Aaron Farrar this morning. And Aaron, oysters actually help rid waterways of pollution. And preventing pollution in the waters, just like here in the Trout River, is what a lot of different organizations are doing. Why? Because I know people fish here, they boat here, they spend a lot of time out on, the, out on the water, and those organizations want to make people have healthier experiences while they're out on the water. We do want to show people something as we talk about oysters. You can't see it really well right now because it's high tide, but down in the water are some oyster shells. You can tell by the wire that's where they're hanging right now, but that work is being done to enhance the quality of water here along the river. This sign details everything you need to know about that. Gardens down here and ah, it's high tide. Taking a stroll to the Trout River are Marsha Ray Wellington and Felicia Mitchell, longtime friends. They're both from Jacksonville's north side and established the Riverview Collective Community Organization, also called RICO. What you see them doing right now is assessing what are called vertical oyster gardens that are in the Trout River and Riverview Park along the pier. About 40 of these gardens will align the river over time. There's a certain way that you want the um, oysters to kind of, you know, uh, appear in the water because the goal is to mimic uh, as natural as of a, you know, process as possible. The gardens are composed of oyster shells that are strategically attached to a wire, all to attract baby oysters. Wellington and Mitchell say the goal is to grow the oyster population. Oysters are sometimes called filter feeders as they can help cleanse waterways of pollutants. They help to protect our coastline. They're a great habitat for marine life. And then they're a great uh, feature to have for filtering. One adult oyster filters 50 gallons of water a day. To see the importance of um, our waterway, of conservation of our, our waterway um, in oysters, okay? Um, flood prevention, um, healthier for our marine life and for us to enjoy um, what we eat from out of the water. You might be wondering what led up to this project launching in the first place. To get that answer, I called John November, who is the executive director of the Public Trust for Conservation. That's a water quality watchdog organization. November says when the group notices that an industrial facility's water quality is out of compliance with its permit, the trust brings legal actions for violations of the Clean Water Act in order to bring that facility back into compliance to prevent further pollution. Instead of paying penalties to the federal government, we ask that they pay environmental benefit payments into the Northeast Florida Environmental Conservation Conservation fund housed at the Community Foundation, and those funds are then used to make a difference in the local community to benefit water quality projects. November says some of those payments or settlements from one industrial facility who the public trust does not publicly identify have resulted in the very first grant being awarded to RICO for this oyster bed restoration project. And it's especially meaningful because the project is happening in the same community where the industrial pollution was taking place. Unfortunately, that pollution often oftentimes includes heavy metals that are carcinogen or cancer causing. So it's especially meaningful to try to give back right there where the impacts are occurring. Wellington and Mitchell say, although the hub for this work is at Riverview Park, they hope this encourages other communities to do the same. We're giving you another live look this morning at some of those vertical oyster beds. You can't see them right now because they are beneath the surface, but again, that work is being done at this point. We're in Riverview Park for a certain reason also. Tomorrow is a big day here. It's the very first Oyster Fest is going to be here. Starting at 11 o'clock in the morning, runs until 4 o'clock tomorrow uh, afternoon. Wellington and Mitchell, they told me that, of course, they want people to come out here and enjoy Oyster Fest, but they also want that to serve as a purpose to be allowing people to educate themselves on the work that's being done right here. We have more of an explanation on our website at news4jacks.com. We're live this morning. I'm Aaron Farrar, Channel 4, The Local Station.